In our previous video on the angular momentum, we found out that the angular momentum of a rigid body is given by this very expression over here. Now let us denote the terms which are inside the summation, that is of which are dependent upon j by the letter i. So we will define i equal to summation under j mj into rho j squared. And this quantity i is actually known as the moment of inertia of the body. As we can easily see from this expression, the moment of inertia depends upon how much mass the particle that makes up a body has and at what position is it located. And hence so you can see that this actually depends upon how the masses of the various particles of which make up a body is distributed in the body. Now we can write the summation only when the masses are discreetly distributed. That is there are finite number of masses. Let's say we have a body. This is an imaginary body which is made up of a finite number of uh, particles uh, m1, m2, m3 and m4. Then we can uh, write the sum. But if there are infinite number of such masses or infinite number of such particles of which make up the body, then what we will have to do is that we have to replace the summation with an integral. That is the moment of inertia will now become equal to integral rho square dm right here we have replaced this rho j by this rho and we have replaced this mj by this dm now as you can easily see from this diagram rho j can be written as some value let's say it has some value of y over here and it also has some component in the x direction that we shall call x then rho can be easily written as x square plus y square. Rho square can be written as x square plus y square using Pythagoras theorem. And dm, that is the mass, elemental mass, can be written as rho. Let me not use rho because we have already used a rho for distance. So let me use a quantity w that represents mass density times dv. That is mass density times volume will obviously give us the mass of the element that we are considering in that body. And hence, uh, if uh, we can define the moment of inertia in this manner, then we can now write uh, angular momentum using this expression as L equal to I omega. 